Hi again. Um, it's uh, Wednesday. It's the thought for the day, number 34. And we're looking at Mark's Gospel. We are still in chapter 4 of Mark's Gospel, uh, just towards the end now. And uh, we're away from seeds. We're not thinking about seeds today. Uh, maybe you'll be pleased to know. Um, we're going to be thinking about something completely different to seeds. So let's read Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. Uh, I've actually been spending much of today thinking about uh, this storyline uh, because it's going to be our theme for this coming Sunday, uh, which is stuck in a storm. Uh, so we're going to read about Jesus calming the storm uh, today and think about that. So we start Mark 4, 35. Uh, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along just as he was in the boat. We'll carry on the moment with that, but let's just stop for a moment. So uh, it's been a busy day. Uh, Jesus has been telling these stories about seeds and lights and so on. And uh, crowds of people have been around. I'm sure he was healing people. He was interacting with people. Uh, and it's getting towards the end of the time. It says, when evening came. So it's the end of the day. Remember, in uh, that time, the end sundown was the end of the day. So it's evening time. It's the end of the day. And Jesus says to his disciples, let's, let's go over to the other side. The other side of where? And he's talking about the Sea of Galilee, the lake. So again, uh, here. He's talking about, let's go over to the other side. Uh, let's come away from the crowd that are really swarming in, I'm sure kind of pushing them um, out in the boat, so to speak, that they couldn't get back on the shore anyway. So he says, let's go over to the other side. Now, question, did Jesus know what was going to happen to that boat? Did Jesus know what was going to happen to them? My answer is yes. I believe he did know what was going to happen. He is, he is God. He knows what is about to happen. He knows what is going on. Uh, he wasn't being surprised by any of this. So um, anyway, it's the end of the day. It's evening. And they push out further into the lake. And uh, we're told uh, he leaves that crowd behind. But there's, there's others. There's other boats around. Um, it says there. And so let's carry on reading. There were also other boats with him. Were they boats that were kind of just following him because uh, of what he'd been doing, is doing and saying and so on? I mean, you couldn't, the crowd couldn't leave the shore, but if there were some boats around, as there were boats around in those days, they probably got on the boats and said, let's, let's follow Jesus, let's carry on going out. Um, so uh, they're not alone. And some were following Jesus. And it says then a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. A furious squall. Again, if you kind of look at the, the understanding of the words, it's kind of like a, a windstorm. It's kind of like there's a real wind coming down. Now, around this area are often described the Sea of Galilee, Lake Galilee, like a... Um, cereal bowl or a soup bowl because it is fairly round and everywhere around lake galilee the the land goes up so you can imagine it's almost like a cereal or a soup bowl and um you will know that when wind comes along the top of uh something imagine when you you've got a a a, um, a bottle and you blow across the top it makes that noise because the wind kind of goes into the bottle uh, and so with this sorry i'm using bottles and bowls i'm not quite sure that's a good way of doing it but anyway as the wind comes along the top of the land and gets to this bowl uh the sea of galilee uh, the wind comes down it drops down into the bowl and uh, it means then that the wind just it says a furious squall, a kind of a windstorm. The wind blows down and starts to beat up the, the lake. And this is quite a big lake. This is like five mile across lake. And the water gets whipped up and the waves start to get quite choppy. It's only a small boat. 
and uh, the waves start to come over the boat and uh, we're told it nearly swamped them uh the, the the greek understanding of the word is uh that it was nearly feel, filled it was just it was filling up with water and of course when a boat fills up with water it will sink and so uh the the disciples get this sinking feeling that they are in trouble they are overwhelmed literally they are overwhelmed with this storm that suddenly blows up and uh storms often blow up on the sea of galilee i've i've been to the sea of galilee and uh, and seen from a distance how it's been calm one hour and the next hour there's black clouds and uh, it gets all choppy and windy and so on uh, so uh, in verse 38 jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion so when these guys all these guys are panicking um, I mean, a normal reaction, normal human instinct. Uh, what was Jesus doing? He is at the back of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. Um, uh, whether he's tired, we're not sure. Um, but certainly he must have been relaxed. He must have been unconcerned by what was going on. As I say, did Jesus know what was about to happen when he sailed out into the Sea of Galilee? Yes, he did yet he still wasn't worried he was at the back of the boat and he was sleeping uh, because he is god um and he is confident in his life for the future he knows he will not die in this boat he knows it's not his time so often he said it's not my time to to die um and here he is fairly early on in his ministry so he knows this is not how it how it ends so he's confident he goes okay this is not my time i can lay in the boat and uh, i know a storm's coming but i'm fine with that and i'll sleep even though there's wind and waves lashing around um and uh he knows but the disciples didn't know of course and and they're they're panicking and disciples it says woke him up and said to him teacher this is a interesting phrase isn't it teacher don't you care if we drown don't you care they're saying this to jesus don't you care and of course he cared jesus is the most compassionate person i know um he was always having compassion for people and of course he cares um but anyway he doesn't say anything to them all he does is he gets up and starts speaking to the wind and the waves we're told in verse 39 he got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves quiet be still and then the wind died down and it was completely calm there is a stillness he is speaking he's not just speaking he's rebuking it says he's rebuking the wind and saying to the waves be quiet because the wind is the thing that's making the waves start and um, and there is a sudden stillness there is a sudden calm because it reacted to what jesus said and some might say well perhaps it was a chance thing that the storm stopped at the moment then jesus spoke to the wind and the waves well certainly the disciples didn't think so because look let's just jump down to verse 41 they were terrified and asked each other who is this even the wind and the waves obey him i mean they were used to being on sea of galilee some of those guys and they're saying who is this they were frightened now of jesus they weren't frightened of the waves they weren't frightened of the wind they weren't frightened of drowning anymore they're now frightened of jesus because gosh what who is this guy that even wind i mean they've seen healings they've seen him touch people and, and they got better but here he is standing up and addressing the elements you can't control i'm going to be saying more of this on sunday you can't control a storm no one has learned how to control a storm and certainly no one knew it then and so these guys are saying who is this that he can control a storm um and um on sunday we will look at this event in more detail um and relate it to us more but just think about the storms you experience between now and when we meet up again on sunday um what 
What storms are you experiencing? Maybe uh, you're about to experience and you're worried about this storm that seems to be coming. Um, let me ask you the same question that Jesus asked his disciples. Why are you afraid? I don't know what storm is in your life. I don't know what storm you think might be coming. Um, but let me ask you, why are you afraid? How much do you understand that Jesus is with you? Well, we'll think more about that on Sunday, but let's just pray, shall we? Father God, you are our Father in heaven, our creator, our provider, our deliverer. As we face storms, we all face storms. May we remember to turn to you and find your peace in our lives. Amen. Again, great to see you and uh, trust that you will join me again for our next thought for the day and also for more on this particular storyline on Sunday. God bless you.